I guess I'm open for questions. Yes, thank you so much for that uh, that great presentation. It was very thorough. So for the audience, if you'd like to ask a question, you can raise your hand um, in Zoom and uh, we'll put the instructions in the chat for those of you who don't know how to do it. And, um, and then um, obviously you, you have a very uh, well-known book that is available on the realtruthabouthealth.com website. Um, when, when you purchase it through the website, you can, uh, you can help out the Real Truth About Health. It, it'll be purchased through Amazon, but then uh, you'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to help us out as we get a little kickback on that. So Mike, have you, uh, got, have you got, I have, uh, when we're through with the questions, I have my, my last two slides. Oh, oh! You, I thought you were okay. I thought you said you were ready for questions. I am. Oh, okay. Oh, you got two more slides. All right. So I'll give you after after we're through with the questions. All right. Perfect. Um, how much time do you need for that? And I'll just keep that in in mind. Oh, uh, for the last two slides, about uh, sixty seconds. Sixty seconds. All right. Perfect. So we'll we'll do that at the end. Um. So we actually have got a lot of hands. So uh, um. Obviously, uh. I think people are very familiar with your work, um, probably through uh, Forks Over Knives as well as uh, as well as your your book. Um, so I'm going to ask a few questions, and I'll turn it over to the audience as well. Um, so you you spoke a little bit about statins, and there there's obviously statins is number one or, or one of the the top medications that are used, uh, it, you know, that are prescribed by doctors. Um, do do statins work and actually prevent people from dying in the long run i i think there is there's there is plenty of data out there indicate indicating that there are some benefits from statins okay and should should people so what should people do when they when they are suggest when their doctor tells them that they should take statins should they just take them or uh, or should they consider lifestyle changes Last thing that I'm going to do is to throw any kind of a wedge between a patient and their physician. Okay. And I think that uh, <clears throat> they did listen to their doctor, but they themselves can be conversant uh, with the uh, literature and, and actually can be their own, uh, their own advocate. I think what often what can happen when patients find that they're taking a statin along with whole food plant-based nutrition, their cholesterol absolutely plummets. And it's, it seemed to me it would be very easy for the patient to have a conversation with their doctor and say, why don't we try cutting the statin in half and see if I'm still do it, getting the results you want. Okay, great. Thank you. So um, could you share more about the 198 participants in your study and the significance of the 99.4% success rate in avoiding major cardiac events? Well, they, <clears throat> these were a group of patients with a significant cardiovascular disease who uh, really came on board and I think uh, <laughs> believed in, uh, in us. And uh, the result was really rather striking that in follow-up, there were mo no major cardiac events in this uh, group that were initially quite sick uh, and now had no further progression of their disease. And what I've tried to do today, and I don't think, uh, at least I think there are very few other physicians who have ever done this. I've already shown you five areas on angiograms of disease reversal. Remember, these patients can always often be helped when the disease is stabilized and not reversed. But it's even further uh, <laughs> excitement when you're able to show reversal. Now, there is one other, uh, since you bring that up, I want to mention at this point, something that happened in my practice that I'd never seen before just in the last uh, three months. Have we got a moment for that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, this was a 63 year old gentleman who in October and November of 2023, just a few months ago, began to experience abdominal pain and they worked him up for diverticulitis. And that was really uh, not very impressive and it was in December of, uh, let's see, it was in December of 2023. He then had a CAT scan of the uh, abdomen and pelvis with contrast. And they found that at the origin of his 
superior mesenteric artery, there was a 75% atherosclerotic plaque. Uh, a week later, he called me, and we went into some detail about how this should be approached. And he was very smart, and he was <laughs> very compliant. And if he really hit the green leafy vegetables strongly, which I mentioned earlier in my presentation, so you're familiar with that. And what happened was, by the third week of January, now this is only about two and a half weeks later, his abdominal pain had disappeared. Well, then, lo and behold, on February the 7th, he had a vascular mesenteric arterial duplex. And the lesion was gone. Was lesion was gone. I don't know if you can still hear me or not. I've, I guess I've lost seeing you. Hello? I'm here. Sorry about that. So, um... So, okay, well, that actually goes to uh, my, my next question, which is through the protocol that you recommend um, through diet and lifestyle changes, what other diseases such as cancer can be impacted? What other, what, what things have you seen? Uh, 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 hello? I, I, do, do you hear me? Yeah, sorry about that. We just had someone interrupt. So um, what other diseases are impacted that, that you've seen side through effects, lifestyle uh, changes. Side effects of this are you lessen the likelihood of stroke, you get rid of hypertension, you get rid of diabetes, you get rid of vascular dementia, you get rid of ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, multiple sclerosis, allergies and asthma, and the list goes on. It's as if in this era, believe it or not, the heavens have opened and presented to the medical profession, really one of the strongest tools they've ever had in their toolbox. And when you present this information, which um, obviously based on your career, you know, you're not some, you know, small doctor that was, uh, you know, who, you know, that, that could be easily discredited. You're obviously an extremely well-respected uh, hospital um, and you've done research that substantiates what your claims are. How do, how do your colleagues look at your body of work and then turn it and essentially ignore it? What, what, do they, or do they come back and say, oh, this is why, you know, you mentioned one point of your uh, people saying, oh, your study is too small. So then you went and you had a much larger study, right? What, what do they come back with when you show them this body of evidence and, and why they don't use it themselves in their, in their practice? I uh, started this 39 years ago. Uh, I was called Dr. Sprouts, <laughs> but but that sort of fell by the wayside as soon as we began seeing these results and reversal. However, now with the, <clears throat> there are different reactions from the cardiovascular theater. Uh, obviously, the first is that it's not going to work. It's too severe or strict. Uh, patients won't follow it. And suddenly, you know, now we've done it with over, you know, close to a thousand patients. But that's two thousand, close to two thousand patients. And I think that one of the, some of the cardiologists have been very honest and said, you know, if you you keep this up, you're going to put us out of business. Really? Okay. So, so it's so it's money over over people. It sounds like to, to some extent. Oh, there are, no, there are a number of cardiologists who, when they themselves have a heart attack, where do they come? <laughs> Right. They come to you. Right. I, I, I want to treat the causation of the illness because right now treating the causation of the illness is not what the cardiovascular uh, group uh, is doing. Because these drugs and stents and bypasses do not treat the causation. Right. That, that, make, that makes sense. So, you know, one of the things that differentiates you from other doctors in this community is, uh, is your, your thoughts on oil and on certain fats. Can you speak a little bit more to, uh, to why you believe we should restrict oil so, uh, so much? And then what, you know, things like nuts and seeds and avocados, what, what is your position on those? But, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not against uh, things like uh, flaxseed meal and chia seeds. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I want to go back. What was the earlier? Oil. Uh, now, oil. I think I mentioned in my presentation that yeah. I had 
paper that was published in the International Journal of Disease Reversal and Prevention. The title of the paper was, Is Oil Healthy? And uh, in that paper, I've discussed the uh, animal studies and the human studies showing how oil injures the endothelial cells. As a matter of fact, I had a slide shortly after I'd mentioned that in my talk, I had a slide and then I read the, the top of it for, uh, for the audience. Olive, olive palm, oil, palm oil and corn oil injure the endothelial cells. So this, you've asked me about oil, that's, that's my answer. I want to get rid of everything that's going to injure the endothelial capacity to make nitric oxide, and certainly oil is in the top of the list. Great, thank you. How often um, do you go to a restaurant that you can't uh, that you <laughs> ask something that isn't doesn't have oil? It, it's extremely challenging. Yeah, it, it's definitely eat, eating out is definitely a challenge. Well, what you do at a restaurant is the way you have to manage it. <clears throat> you can't just sort of bury your head in the menu and say go easy on the oil. You turn in your chair and you look the waiter or the waitress squarely in the eye and you un make them understand that you are deathly allergic to a single drop of any oil. Then they sit down with you to look at the menu at the same time. And what, lo and behold, it all has oil. So now you flatter them. You flatter them and you ask to see the chef. The chef comes out and you say to the chef, <clears throat> deathly allergic to a drop of oil, you can't have animal protein or, or dairy or sugar. He comes back 20 minutes later with a lovely plate of beans and rice, or it might be a baked potato with a vegetable, but you never go to a restaurant to further destroy your endothelial cells. <laughs>